While Nvidia commands roughly 80% of the AI chip market, a wave of competitors across the globe are sweeping with alternative solutions that could reshape the semiconductor landscape. In this video, let's explore what's happening in this rapidly evolving space. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. Please also follow me on X if you're looking for AI updates without any hype and fluff. So as we all know, Nvidia is the leader. There is no doubt about that. Google has also recently opened access to its most powerful AI chip, Ironwood, marking a significant step in its cloud strategy. The chip, which underwent internal testing since April, is now broadly available as part of Google's Tensor Processing Unit lineup or TPU. These TPUs have become central to Google's competitive advantage, with CEO Sundar Pichai highlighting them as a major driver of Google's cloud growth over the past year. But I think they would need to open up more because just being Google's product doesn't really cut it for the mass market. The business impact would be really substantial if Google does that. The good thing is that Google isn't alone in this pursuit. Amazon is also creeping along with their Trainium chips, but, but again, a very closed sort of system. Microsoft is also working on Maya processors for its cloud infrastructure. But again, that is also something very, very confined. But the chip is designed specifically for matrix inversion, complex mathematical operations which are really essential for AI training, scientific computing. Now, one thing which is extremely promising is analog computing from China. That's not new. Its basic principles date back to ancient Greece, by the way but it has historically faced challenges with scalability and precision that made digital computing dominant. But now China has a breakthrough which claims that they can make an analog AI chip which would be thousand times faster than current Nvidia chips. A tall claim, but we would see. The technology is not going to replace digital processor entirely, but it could complement them in scenarios where energy efficiency and speed for particular calculations matter most. For me, one of the most exciting and maybe bit unusual advancement has come from neither China nor from US, but from Japan. Japan's wake up call came, I think at the right time. They are attempting something even more ambitious, a complete semiconductor comeback. In the late 1980s, Japan produced over half the world's chips. Today, that figure has dropped below just 10%. The decline stemmed from strategic misstep. Japanese firm stuck with the integrated device manufacturer model doing everything in-house, while competitors like TC TSMC specialized and achieved massive scale. By 2010s, the most advanced chip made on Japanese soil was just a 40 nanometer node, while even Taiwan and South Korea produce seven, five and three nanometer chips. So you can compare the huge difference between these two. Japan's, <clears throat> as I said, wake up call that came during a recent supply chain crisis when chip shortages halted production of everything from cars to bank cards. The Japanese government responded with a two-track strategy, invite foreign leaders like TSMC to build fabs in Japan and foster <coughs> domestic champions for the most advanced technologies. And this is where this Rapidus uh, Corporation comes in. It was founded in just three years ago as a public-private venture backed by eight Japanese corporate giants, including Toyota, Sony, NTT, and SoftBank. The mission is audacious. Mass produced two nanometer chips by 2027. The Japanese government has committed over 6.5 US billion dollars in subsidies with total investment projected at 35 billion US dollars. So that is massive. Rapidus broke <coughs> ground on its 
Hokkaido Fab in September 2023 and powered up a pilot production line in April 2025. The facility houses over 200 pieces of um, cutting edge equipment, including extreme ultra ultraviolet lithography. Um, that and those machines cost over 300 million dollar each. The company has partnered with IBM to use breakthrough in 2 nanometer nanosheet transistor technology with over 100 Rapidus engineers working at IBM's Al Albany complex. Now, in my opinion, what makes Rapidus different isn't just the technology node. It's a manufacturing approach. Rather than processing wafers in large batches like conventional fabs, Rapidus plans to use single wafer processing. Each wafer moves through independently that allows for customization and faster turnaround. This sacrifices some throughput efficiency but offers flexibility for customers needing smaller lots quickly. AI startups are iterating on design, research labs are specialized industries, and that is what makes it really, really you know, promising in my humble opinion. And there are a lot of other cool things happening around that company and especially in Japan. And the company also emphasizes design manufacturing co-optimization using AI and extensive sensors to monitor each wafer in real time. Data feeds back continuously into design and process tuning, theoretically shortening the time needed to reach high yields. It is an untested approach at this scale, essentially combining several innovations simultaneously on one of the most complex manufacturing challenges in existence. But that is what we need. We need to think out of the box if we want to have not a monopoly in the market. And we all understand that the challenges are formidable. Funding remains a concern. The 6.5 billion US dollar committed covers only about one fifth of the projected uh, billions and billions of dollars needed. Rapidus must at attract significantly more private investment while proving its viability. The talent gap is equally daunting. Japan's pool of experienced semiconductor engineers largely dissipated after the 1990s. But they are hiring aggressively and partnering with universities, but competing globally for scarce expertise, that would be hard. Also, technologically, the company faces a narrow two-year window to go from pilot to volume production. Even established manufacturers like Intel and Samsung have stumbled on new nodes. Any significant delays could undermine stakeholder confidence, and that is where I think they face lot of competition and by the time Rapidus reaches 2 nanometer production in 2027, TSMC and Samsung will likely be manufacturing at that note for already two years, with plans already underway for maybe 1.4 nanometer chips by 2028. So challenges are huge, but I think someone has to start from somewhere. So I'm very hopeful uh, about Japanese chip. Let's see how they go. Please follow me on X as that helps a lot and please like and subscribe to the video and become a member. Thank you for all the support.